Hi, this is Jay Lake, and I'm going to try to process uh, Neil's Cocoon Nebula data. And uh, here's what I ended up with. I, I, I ran a, a trial run to see if I could even do anything with it. And um, I kind of like how this turned out. I, I'm going to try to recreate this here using uh, Neil's master files. So I'm going to go over to a new space and uh, open up what I have. Um, now, just like in Neil's video, I had to do uh, star alignment to register everything. And so I, I've done that before. That takes a little bit of time, so I'm going to not show that step. Um, but we'll see that all of them are uh, already aligned uh, using star alignment. Okay, um, so when I open the data initially, I want to stretch it to a, a screen stretch. And I could open screen transfer function, but a very handy shortcut to use on the Mac is Command-A. Um, or on the PC, it would be Control-A. And uh, it just gives the, the basic auto stretch that screen transfer function would do. Um, I could go up here and show screen transfer function. And if I turn tracking on, you can reset it. And then I can also hit this A button here. But uh, just hitting Command A is a very easy way to instantly see uh, what's on your screen. So um, let's see, I'm going to tie all the windows here so I can see what I'm looking at. And if I hold down space, I can move around and then use the scroll bar, uh, the trackpad, to zoom in. And one nice feature that I like is you can zoom to the same center and depth um, just by dragging the tab on top of the other tab. So we can kind of look at our data. And we see some uh, the RGB data is a uh, little, little low key. It's mainly a red object. So the red is the strongest, but this H alpha data is beautiful. So that's really going to be our, our detail. Um, and then we can work on the, the color enhancement from there. So, uh, okay, I'm going to cascade them and do our uh, LRGB combine. Um, I saw Neil use the uh, let's see process explorer over here. Um, I tend these days to just use the all processes and then type the letter. So. L for LRGB combination. I'll reset this one. And uh, one thing I like to do is rename um, each of the files. So I'm going to call this, um, see, I already used RGB for the other one. So I'll use CR for cocoon, red, CG, CB, and CH for CH alpha. So there, the, there's uh, everything for the Cocoon Nebula. Now I'm going to uncheck L for starters and just use CR, CG, CB to make a uh, RGB file. And I'll leave everything else the same. I'm going to apply that globally. So that should make a brand new file. And now I can actually, uh, I'll keep the H alpha, but um, I can tuck away red, green, and blue. I could probably close these now unless I was going to use them again, like uh, with pixel math, but in this case I'm not going to do that. Um, and now I'm going to call this CRGB. Close this. Okay, so let's take a look at this file. I'm going to hit Command A again to do an automatic screen stretch, and we see instantly that it is uh, kind of yellowish. We see the edge artifacts. Um, one nice thing that you can do with screen transfer is turn off the linked RGB channels and then rerun the stretch. Now we see much better what it's going to look like. Right away though we notice that there are some significant gradients, some uh, reddish and greenish and blue gradients. Um, we're going to remove those but we want to get rid of these edge artifacts first. So I'm going to run the dynamic crop tool and set up a crop that trims any of the black edges and just for good measure maybe a little off these sides as well um, and then before running it I'm going to drag a copy of that uh, new instance uh, process icon that I can apply to the luminance uh, to the H alpha data so they will stay the same so I'm going to uh, run this it crops it nicely and then I'm going to close it and then I'm going to run that same icon on top of the H alpha and the way that we check to see if it worked is if the, uh, the zoom on the tabs works. If it works it's good. 
Um, if I tried it with one of these other ones that hasn't been cropped, I'll get an X, meaning they are not the same geometry. Uh, but this, in this case, did work uh, because we use the exact same crop on the same dimension image files. So you could save that if you want, or I'm, I'm just going to tuck it away. Um, okay, so now we have our H alpha data and our red, green, and blue data, but we uh, both files have some background issues. So uh, the tool that really brought me to PixInsight was dynamic background extraction. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to use automatic background extractor. So I'll reset that. Um, I'm not going to mess with any of the default settings. I'm just going to turn the correction to division. I'm going to divide out. I, I think these gradients were caused by flat field issues, and therefore I want to divide out. Uh, I'm not going to normalize. I'm not going to discard the background model. I want to take a look at it. Um, sometimes I'll just get rid of it. And then I do want to replace the target image um, to keep the history on this RGB going. So I'm going to apply that and see what we get. So it generates a model and then it applies the model. Let's take a look at the model first. If I give that a screen stretch, Command A, I see indeed that reddish uh, side and then kind of this green, greenish glow in the middle. So I can delete this now and then rerun this screen stretch, Command A. And wow, I, I think to me that looks a lot better. Let's see. From this to this. Uh, it's a much more evenly illuminated field. That's what we're looking for. And it's a big scale gradient, so it's not going to get rid of, rid of any of our nice features in the actual data. Um, I want to be sure to run a screen or a uh, background extraction on the H data as well. It probably has far fewer issues with flat fielding, but um, we can see it's going to make a subtle, subtle difference here from this to this. So it'll give it a nice evenly illuminated background. So I have these two files and um, there are a few other steps that I could do with uh, in the linear space here. I could run some deconvolution um, which is pretty time intensive. Uh, I could run some uh, noise um, denoising algorithms but uh, for now I'm just going to combine the two of them. So I'm gonna apply um, a uh, automatic histogram uh, stretch by opening up histogram transformation and then taking the data from screen transfer function let me just make sure I have the right file picked here so right now it's unstretched it's linear and I can now take the screen transfer function data from the automatic and then apply it to the histogram and that's the stretch that it's going to give me it's going to put the data right at one quarter of the histogram and then go ahead and stretch the data like that. It turns white because it, right now it's doubly stretched, both screen stretched and histogram stretched, so I'll just reset the screen transfer function. And that looks the way it should. And I'm going to do the same to the H data, CH. Notice it's also right at one quarter. This has the effect of making the two of them have the same uh, histogram profile and therefore they can be combined without automatic. Now it tends to blow out the data a bit but that's okay we can go back and make a second screen uh, or a histogram stretch um, with the colors that we want but this is a, a good way of combining the, the two so I'll close that for now. I think I'm done with screen transfer function. Um, I think I'm going to do uh, a little bit of detail work to the histogram, or sorry, to the H alpha data uh, first. So I'm going to pull out a clone of that data and then apply it as a mask by dragging it underneath the tab. And I can invert the mask to see uh, anything that is in red is protected, so in this case the background, and anything that's left white is less protected or not protected at all. I'll turn off. Uh, no show mask. And then there are a couple of nice uh, things that I can do here. I can run HDR multi scale transform uh, with the default settings here, um, five layers. And we can see that we get a lot more contrast, we get a lot more depth. Um, and maybe that's a bit much. Maybe I'll, I'll set it to lightness mask here. Yeah, that looks good. 
And then uh, I think I'm going to do a little local histogram. Um, local histogram equalization to this as well. I'll dial it down a little bit here. Kernel radius contrast limit should be okay. Uh, this is one of those steps that I, I would play with back and forth quite a bit. Um, let's see how that looked. From here to here. Good. So that's a nice level of contrast with this beautiful, beautiful H alpha data. Um, and then because this color data, I, I could do some of those steps as well, but I, I'm not going to. Um, I'm going to wait till after we combine them. So I think we're ready to combine. Uh, I'm going to use LRGB uh, combination as well uh, again, but I'm going to turn off everything but the luminance and treat the CH as the luminance. I'm going to turn down the saturation, uh, which as Neil said is was counterintuitive to me as well, but now when I think of it as a, a histogram stretch, moving the midtone slider down, it's like curving it up and therefore making it more saturated. It makes a little bit more sense to me, I guess. Um, why don't I try point 0.4 here. Again, I do several variations to see what I liked. and uh, So that really makes it pop, but it gives it that kind of salmon color as well. I'm going to try to fix that in the next couple steps. So I'll do undo, redo. Um, I think what I want to do is once I, I dial it in the way I like it, maybe I'll dial down the saturation a little more, and then turn on chrominance noise reduction. Uh, this will make the color data uh, a bit smoother and therefore get rid of some of those blocky red, green, and blue pixels in the background. Okay. Really like that result. Um, okay, so I think I'll go a little bit further on this image, a couple of final adjustments. Um, so you can just follow along. Let's see. Uh, one thing I always run after this step is SCNR to get rid of any kind of greenish glow. I'll just leave all the defaults on. And uh, let's see, we went from that. Uh, not too much of a change on this one. It's mainly red, green, and blue. Um, so now the trick is, how am I going to enhance this uh, without blowing out everything else? Well, I need some masks, and I think for this one, I'm going to use the Range Selection tool. I'll reset that from my previous. It's got a nice uh, real-time preview, and it starts off white. Uh, as I increase the lower limit, start to see features come in. And I can really just capture the cocoon nebula itself. Uh, I'm going to dial up the fuzziness that will allow us to see some more features. You know, it's got some dark dust in the middle there. That's okay. We won't need to enhance that. And um, I want to kind of leave off the surrounding halo. Then I'm going to bump up the smoothness so it's a little bit, it's got, it's got a, a smooth edge. So a little bit of tweaking here. All right, why don't we try that? So when I apply it, it will make a black and white mask, which I can then apply. I can see that in action here, and it's, it's really focused in on the red. All right, so I'll re-invert that, turn off show mask, and then uh, I'm going to play with, with curves a bit here. That. All right, curves transformation will allow us to uh, adjust several parameters here. I'll reset it. Um, I'll turn on the real-time preview to track exactly what I'm doing. And then uh, one thing I want to definitely boost is the saturation, make this a bit redder. I think I'm going to dial down the RGBK, which is like the uh, darkness, uh, the luminance part of it. There's actually a full luminance slider here that I could use, um, but that's obviously too much. If I want to reset any of these, I just hit the partial reset. Um, I could reset them all by clicking the corner one, of course. So, okay, well, saturation, dial it up. And then darken it a bit here. It gives a nice red color. Maybe not too much there. 
and I'll probably run a local histogram equalization again to um, bring out some of that nice lightness again. But you see that we kept the kind of grayish clutter around it. I think that looks nice. So let me apply the, these curves. So uh, yeah, let me just zoom out a little bit. And so we've got before and after. Okay, that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to do some of that local histogram equalization. Let's see what it looks like just with these settings that we had before. Here, okay, so that give it a give it a nice bit of pop there. Um, it might be saturating the uh, some of these features a little too much. Um, I don't know. We run the risk of over processing at this stage. Um, I think I'll dial that down even more. So you see a lot of undo redo as I play with each of these, and of course it's to taste. Some people like a, a stronger process. Some people like to kind of have a hands-off approach. Um, okay, so in the end I'm going to uh, disable the mask and run a final histogram transformation. This is my CRGB. Turn on real-time preview for this one. So just like Neil, I'll bring it up to the, the foot of the hills here and I can zoom way in if I want to get a good view of the data. Maybe uh, should I bump the midtones a little? Again, this is uh, one of those steps that's to your to your taste. Close the real time preview. Apply the histogram. I think that's looking pretty nice. And uh, finally, why don't I do uh, saw this as a suggestion in the thread? I'll run a, a star mask and do a bit of uh, morphological transformation on the stars to uh, dim them down a little bit. Just check my mask here, enable it, show it. Good, just looking at just the stars. And then I'll run morphological transformation with erosion on. That means I'm going to dim the stars a little bit here. And I'll, uh, I'll dial that down um, again to taste. So from here to here.